Good morning, Connection Point. We've all been um, trying to figure out what's happening here. We, we have a new drummer, and um, this morning we have a debut of Dalton, who's going to play with us on the Woo! worship team this morning. But I think it's throwing Lieutenant Stefan and Tom just a little bit off with our <laughs> live stream this morning. But we are so excited to have Dalton sitting here with us, and he's going to play, and... Um, we just thank God that he has given every one of us a talent to use, and we are thankful this morning that God has given Dalton this one, and he's going to use it for his glory. We pray that you have come this morning with open hearts, and one of our first songs we're going to sing is Surely Goodness, Love, and Mercy, and it's found in Psalm 23, and I thought what a beautiful way to start our service this morning, because I don't know what you're coming to church with this morning. I don't know what your heart is heavy with. I don't know what you've experienced this week. But I do know that the promise is found in Psalm 23. It's what I pray for you today as you enter into this time of worship. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you, God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning as we sing this, I pray that you will use these words of Psalm 23 as your prayer. The Lord is your shepherd. He guides you beside still waters. Surely goodness and love will follow you always. And this is our prayer for you this morning as we worship together. All right, let's sing it together. Yeah, I am super excited that Dalton is Joining us, he's going to be playing the first song with us. He's been working so hard, uh, learning to play the drums in music class at school. And every Sunday, before the service, after the service, he's jumping on whenever he can. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's doing fantastic. So, here we go. Let's sing out together.
And we've got all these comments here telling about how you're natural and how awesome of a job you did. So your church family is so excited this morning to see you engaging in worship this way. And if they, if they people were here, there would be applause. They'd Absolutely. Be Woo! It was awesome.
God, we believe where you reign. There is freedom. Your chains, they break whatever holds us down. So God, as we've sang that song, I pray that freedom has been brought to your church. That as we sang, Jesus reigns, that Lord, we claim that in our lives, in our homes, at our work, at our church, you reign. And only you reign, God, in all things for us. Because where you reign, your goodness lies. So God, may we rest there. May we rest there, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. here for a minute. We started our service with saying the Lord is my shepherd and when we look through scripture it tells us that the shepherd runs after that one sheep. He always goes looking for that one sheep and we're just saying your goodness is running after me. 
The Lord is your shepherd. And like I said at the beginning, I don't know what this week held for you. I don't know, but your shepherd is running after you right now with his goodness, with his love. I give you everything because all my life you've been faithful. You know what? Six weeks ago, I had a surgery. And I'm standing and I'm bouncing as I'm singing this morning. All my life, you've been so good. That's not saying that your life has always been good, but it's saying that all through your life, God has been there. His grace has been sufficient. He has fulfilled every one of your needs. Get that, not your want, your need. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow me. Why? Because your goodness is running after me. Do you see that this morning? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What a beautiful thought. I want you to sit in that for a moment. What's he running after you for this morning? What are you holding on to? Give it all to him. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. after us daily, wanting us to be in relationship with you. So God, right now, as Stefan brings forth your word, Lord, may it be meat to our bodies today. God, may it be like honey to our souls. Lord, we thank you for this time in your presence. We love you, Lord.
Well, thanks again, worship team, and send that. Just getting mics figured out, getting stands moved, and getting things back in order. But uh, we're we're looking forward to back next week, and I'm cutting in and out again. But uh, that's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, but we look forward to welcoming you back next week, welcoming you back into this place, and we look forward to... Um, the filling of the Holy Spirit in this place next Sunday. Um, so stay tuned to your emails this week of when you can start to register and, and some of the restrictions about um, gathering for worship and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we look forward to regathering next week. And hopefully this is the last time, at least for a long while, that I need to look at a camera specifically um, to bring forward a sermon. Um, but we will continue live streaming um, for the next little while at least um, because we are going to be limiting the number of people who can come into this space. Um, but all those details will be laid out in an email this week and on our Facebook page, so um, just stay tuned for that. But we f- uh, finish our sermon series this week on Explained. In the last number of weeks, we've been looking at different portions of Scripture and trying to explain what the Bible is, what the Bible means. And before the service, we talked about how this is the last sermon series talking about the Bible. Well, every sermon is about the Bible, or it should be, um, but uh The last four or five weeks, we've been really zoning in on the meaning of the Bible and how, yes, it can be confusing. Yes, how we could we could have a lot of questions about Scripture. We've been talking about how we need to have context around a certain portion of Scripture. And uh, today we talk about the Bible brings things to light. And you'll see it on the screen there. We'll be looking at Psalm 119, verse 105, and Psalm 119, verse 11, just to kind of bring everything together and how the Bible uh, brings light. So you've probably heard how life-changing Scripture can be for someone. Uh, Maybe for yourself, maybe for people that you know in your family or in your community that you're living in. Um, But maybe for you specifically, maybe the Bible hasn't delivered what you were told it would. Maybe you haven't felt that change in your life by reading Scripture. Because maybe you've been um, trying to focus literally on what what it's trying to say to you. But maybe in the past you decided to start reading the Bible itself. And you wanted to experience this life change for yourself. And maybe you've used a daily reading plan, or maybe you've used a a devotional that you bought at a book and Bible store, and you got less than you expected. You didn't get that full full feeling about what the Bible can do for your life. But maybe you've heard the Bible described, and we talked about this a number of weeks ago, as a guidebook or an instruction manual for your life. Yes, it can be that. Or maybe you've heard it described as a place to find solutions to all your problems. That's probably not the case. Or maybe you've been told that the Bible has the answers for every question in your life. Kind of like a spiritual Google, per se. But we all know that isn't true. We know the Bible is not a a spiritual Google. But the Bible is pretty silent on the appropriate amount of screen times for It probably doesn't spell that out. But the Old Testament, it doesn't give advice on what to do if you can't remember how to log on to your online bank account. And while Jesus had some inspiring words about loving your enemy, he didn't specifically address that horrible co-worker who constantly took credit for your ideas and your hard work. doesn't really say that in Scripture. And the Bible doesn't even address social, social media etiquette, although I wish it would for some people. 
I'm sure we can all think of, of things like that. But sometimes, in fact, it seems like the Bible answers the questions we're not asking. Like what to do when there's church conflict among leaders, or how the nation of Israel was formed, or who Jesus' great, 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 great grandfather was. These are not the questions I'm asking this morning. Instead, the Bible seems to be eerily silent on some of the big questions we're asking in life. Like, how do I know if the person I'm dating is the one? Or when will my baby start sleeping through the night? I ask that every night in our home as Tommy is looking at me in his playpen back there. But what another one would, what should I say during my job interview this week? And it leaves us wondering this question. If the Bible doesn't really answer the questions that are important in my life, is it actually useful? And the answer is, yes, it is useful. But in order to answer this question, we're going to look at a passage from the book of Psalms. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, turn with me to Psalm 119. But the Psalms are a collection of ancient Jewish poems, songs, and prayers about people's experiences with God and their circumstances in life. And if you spend some time reading through the book of Psalms, all 150 chapters of it, you'll realize that they actually covered a pretty wide range of emotions. They cover joy, they cover happiness, they cover um, sadness, they cover grief and sorrow. They cover so many different emotions. And there were even some poems that were written out of anger. But songs that were sung maybe in depression. But prayers that were prayed in excitement. And today we look at verses 105 and verse 11. It says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path, or a light to my path. And in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. But verse 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Now, who would agree with me out there and in here, worship team and sound team, that light is super helpful? Yes. Yeah, I'm getting some head nods and getting some reaction, and I can't wait for next Sunday. That would be even more people here to build on it. But nobody wants to drive their vehicle at night with their headlights off, do they? Or maybe you do, and you're just kind of that rebellious person that you just want to do it. But nobody maybe wants to eat at a restaurant with the lights off. Some mixed reactions here. That's good. Romantic by candlelight, but there's still light. Right? Nobody likes to find their way to the bathroom in the middle of the night without some kind of light. You stub your toe off the bottom of your bed or the door frame as you're entering the washroom, and then you fall and smack your head off the toilet. No one would like that. I'm speaking from experience when I was younger. But anyway, that's time for another story. But when it's dark, whether it's in your house, whether it's in your car, or whether it's just in your life, Light makes all the difference, doesn't it? Light makes all the difference. But the writer here in Psalm was saying that God's Word can light our path in life. Amen? It can light our path in life. And the same, at the same time, this means that God's Word is like a headlight, not a GPS. The Bible is like a lamp, but not a map. And God's word is a flashlight, not a survival guide. And we tend to think that the most useful things in life are things that tell us exactly what to do or where we got to go. And we want specific answers. We want concrete answers in our life. Yes or no. Turn left or turn right. Is it black or is it white? Or are we in the gray, which I don't like. 
Do we continue something or do we cancel it? But the Bible doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. Instead, it lights up where you are and what you've experienced so far. It can show you what's up ahead and what to watch out for. But it doesn't always tell you an exact answer. And boy, in my life, I wish I had exact answers for some things. But it doesn't happen that way. But a light illuminates your path so that you're better equipped to make the best choices for your life. In other words, the Bible gives you light or it enlightens you with wisdom to make the wisest decision possible. And most of the time, however, we get frustrated because we want the Bible to give us specific, specific answers, concrete answers. But that's not what the Bible does. Instead, the Bible lights up the whole picture for us. It helps us connect all the pieces in our life. It, it brings us together. It brings us together. And it's because of the Bible we can see a lot more and a lot more clearly in our life. Then we can move forward and make the best choices, which ultimately means this. The title of the sermon, The Bible Brings Things to Light. You get that, church? The Bible brings things to light. So instead of seeing the Bible as an instruction manual, we can see it as a light that guides us in our daily walk. It's a light as, as we walk and as we journey in, in life. And it can help us navigate paths that feel uncertain. It can help us navigate things that are scary. And maybe sometimes when they're even confusing and we don't know what path we're going down or what journey in life we're going to take. Or for Dalton, who graduates in a few weeks, what his plans are for the future. I'm sure he has some things in his mind. But they're probably scary. He's probably confused on what he wants to do. And that's okay. So instead of seeing the Bible as this, we see it as a light that guides us, and it can help us navigate all of these different things. But now when you don't have light, you're in the dark, obviously. <laughs> if you don't have that light, you're in the dark. And darkness often feels uncertain, it feels scary, it feels unknown. And if you've ever been in the dark, you know that light is helpful before an emergency becomes an emergency, right? You need that light, and that's why you turn on your headlights before you start driving. And the Bible works the same way. It gives us light before we stumble into trouble. It gives us those, those encouraging words. It gives us that uplifting spirit in our life that we need before things get difficult. And it's helpful to use it way before we even need it. We need the Bible. We need God's Word in our life. And earlier in that same chapter, we read verse 11. And it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that's how we should use God's Word. We have it, we have it on our hearts. Not as a genie, not as a Google map app, not as an instruction manual that we turn on when, we des when we're desperate for help. But instead we can use scripture as a light that's always shining in our hearts. A light that's always shining in our hearts, something that we can always go to when the darkness begins to creep in. So when, so when something comes up in our life, we're ready for it. God doesn't tell us that when we have him in our life, when we have him on our hearts, that things are going to be easy. I wish it were that way. But it's when we have God in our life that we know that there's that, just that little bit of light that, that keeps us going, that we can turn to when things get difficult, that we can turn to when we don't know where to turn. But we already have it. We just got to flick that light on. We got to just turn to God's word. Amen. Or maybe when we have to make health decisions for ourselves or our families.
We'll have God's word with us to comfort us with his promises. It doesn't say what the outcome is going to be, but we know that God is with us. We'll remember that he is with us every step of the way. Maybe when we have to make difficult financial decisions, we'll have God's word to remind us that he wants us to experience that freedom and not to be indebted to others in this life. And when we have to make personal decisions about the relationships in our lives, we'll have God's word so that we know how to treat and love others accordingly, even in the toughest times. And at some point in our life, we'll all face decisions where we need answers. We're not going to get around that. And it will be tempting to treat the Bible like Google and search for a specific answer, to lay it out in black and white. But when we treat the Bible that way, it actually leads us to be more confused about what it's saying. But on the other hand, when we use the Bible as a light or a lamp, we'll see a bigger picture. We'll see the entire story. And the path forward is illuminated. But it doesn't mean our immediate questions will get immediate answers. But it does mean that we'll see all of life with a little bit more clarity. We will see life with just a little bit of a clearer picture. So in order to hide something in your heart, in order for something to be an anchor in your life, in order for something to be a light along your path, you have to spend time with it, don't you? And I've been saying that over the last number of weeks, that we need to spend time in God's Word. Not just when we, we watch our service on Sunday, not when we can gather here and we open our Bibles for a call to worship or a benediction or for, for the sermon. We need it more. We need it every day in our life. We need to be constantly in God's Word. For example, if you want to learn a different language, the best way to learn is to be immersed in that language is to use it every day, to spend time in it. If you want to get in the best shape of your life, if you want to start working out, it's going to require more than five minutes a day for five days. I, w I wish it was like instant. But you have to spend time with it, don't you, Dalton? But there's a famous statistic that if you want to become really good at something... You have to spend over 10,000 hours practicing it if you want to be really, really good at it. Which is another way of saying you have to spend time with it. You have to give it your all. You have to pour your heart and your soul into it. And the Bible works very similar. The Bible is something that you have to spend time with daily, every day. The more you use it as a light, the more you'll see that the Bible is best understood this way. So spend time in His Word, church. And this happens when we learn from experiences in our life. We learn from the choices that we make. And we learn that wisdom looks like by reading about the lives in Scripture. We learn from the accounts of the individuals who wrote God's Word. And experiences reveal more about who God is and what He's like and how God showed up. You get how God showed up in His Word. In these stories, in the accounts of the encounters that the disciples had with Jesus. What the Romans had. What the Israelites had. So practically speaking, what does this... What does this look like? And again, to continue on with the last number of weeks, I want to give you three ways you can spend time in the Bible. Three ways. The first is this. To read a passage from the Bible for ten minutes. That's all it takes. Ten minutes. Every day. And if you haven't opened God's Word before... John's Gospel in the New Testament is a great place to start. Or the other Gospels. Or you look at the Psalms. Or even Proverbs is a great place to start. 
But the point is not to tell you where to start in the Bible, but it's the point to spend 10 dedicated minutes a day. That's all it takes. And you can do that whether you, you wake up 10 minutes early in the morning, instead of hitting that snooze button, you, you, you just get up, you open the Word, spend 10 minutes, then you go about your day. Or maybe it's before you go to bed at night. Instead of scrolling through Facebook for 10 or 15 minutes as you lie in bed, and I'm guilty of that, you spend 10 minutes reading His Word. And as you read, think about what you can observe from the writer's life for what they wrote about. The second is this. Talk to someone about you read. What about it is that you read? Talk about it with your friends, with your family, with your church family. For as long as there's been a Bible, there have been traditions of talking about it. In Bible studies, we talk about discussing what the scriptures say and asking questions about it with other people. It's good to ask questions. On Tuesday, Tom called me in because they had questions. There was different ways to look at scripture. And it was some great discussions from what I heard on Tuesday here in Bible study. But that's good. That's what we want. And reading and learning the Bible was never intended to be a solo event. It was never to be done by yourself all the time. It's important to bring other people around you. And when you invite others in their, with their experience and their own wisdom, their perspectives can help you understand what the Bible is maybe lighting up in your own life. And then thirdly, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. And I'll probably say it again in a number of weeks, is to memorize Scripture. Memorize it. As Tommy's cooing in the background. Pick a passage and commit it to memory. Deciding to memorize a passage of the Bible is like making a, a decision in your life to pack a flashlight for a camping trip just in case you need it. And when you memorize a part of the Bible, you're tucking that away in your heart to bring it out saying, oh yeah, I remember that. This is helping me. It's helping me. And when you do need it in your life, the wisdom and truth of what you've memorized will come to mind and help you know what to do in the moment to move forward. So church, pick a passage and read it for 10 minutes. Talk to someone about it. Talk to someone about what you read. And thirdly, memorize it. Memorize it. As the worship team comes back and in, as we continue in worship and a time of reflection this morning and as we conclude our sermon series, Unexplained, we're going to sing a wonderful song, a chorus by Corey Asbury. Always faithful. And the verse says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he heard my cry. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. And he answered me. You see, church, this is so big in our journey as Christians, as our journey as faith believers. And the Bible brings things to light. I didn't just make that up this morning, but the Bible brings things to light. And it may not always give us those specific answers that we're looking for or that we feel that we need in a, in a moment of despair, in a moment of discouragement, a moment where we feel anxious about something. But over time, it illuminates our entire journey. It il illuminates our path in life that we're taking. And they're not talking about how the Bible gave them a secret stock tip or anything like that or cured their health concerns. They're talking about in Scripture how the Bible told them about, just listen to this church, about a God who walks with them and is for them. 
They're talking about how the Bible gave them light to see life better. That's what we're going to sing about this morning. And in the pre-chorus of the song, the weeping endures for the night. Your joy comes in the morning. And what else comes in the morning? Light. Light comes in the morning. Though sorrow may last for a time, your joy comes in the morning. Light comes in the morning. But to get these benefits, church, and then we'll sing. We had to put time into it. Because over time, it will help us understand ourselves better. Hey, bud. Others and God. And when we use it like it was meant to be used to give us light, it can illuminate our lives so that we can see more clearly and that we can live more fully in our life. So friends, join us in this worship. As Tommy here, yes, absolutely. He is here. And Big Tom is here too. Trying to pick it up. But church, don't let all this be a distraction to you this morning. We'll be together next week and you can see this in person. But church, read scripture. Ask questions. Memorize it. And just let it permeate your heart. Permeate your life. We can always be faithful. So church, sing with us. Worship with us. Pick a portion of scripture this morning to memorize and to read. And reflect on the words of this great song this morning. God bless you, friends. God bless you. And continue in worship with us this morning. Amen.
What a beautiful way to end off our um, Explain sermon series when we think about it because all through this sermon series, it's been seeking the Lord through his scripture. And what a beautiful way to end saying, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And all through scripture, time and time again, we see and read stories of where God answered those who sought him, where God showed his faithfulness, and we see the joy that God brought to their lives as they sought him. And that is what we want you to do, church, is to seek the Lord and to listen to him through his word because he is faithful and he is good and he is running after you. And I promise you, he will bring joy. That doesn't mean you're always going to be happy, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when you seek him and you spend time in his presence, you will find him and he will answer you. That I know for sure. I believe that. I've experienced that. And I pray that for you today. Tom. If you can come and grab the camera for one quick second, I want to show everybody out there something. So next Sunday, June 20th, you know what? Fathers always say that they don't get a big celebration. Well, I think next Sunday, Father's Day, we're going to have a stinking big celebration because we're coming home. Connection point. Woo! Woo! And we have all the chairs set up. It's going to show you here in a second. All the chairs are set up. We are waiting for you to come sit in these chairs and to worship God with us. Look at that beautiful sanctuary that is set up and ready for you. We are asking you to register. Registration does not open till Tuesday. I feel like the trademark things on Walmart, like, you know, to, to re play responsibly, all these things. Oh. Registration does not start till Tuesday morning. So please don't text me tonight. Don't text me tomorrow. Um, Tuesday morning. We are asking you to register, and I think we're stopping at 40? 40. We are going to welcome 40 of you to the sanctuary next Sunday morning to celebrate Father's Day and to have church together here in this beautiful space. So welcome home, Connection Point. Woohoo! So, like I said, Tuesday morning, uh, email me or text me and let me know if you want to come to church and we are looking forward to inviting you back into this space and welcoming you here. God's Grunts is this Wednesday night at Connection Point. Am I right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was no grunting. God's Grunts. <gasps> Thank you. Wednesday night at 6.30 here at Connection Point. And friends, if you haven't checked your emails, please do that. On June the 25th, we have a beautiful, exciting, fun family night plan, and you need to register for that ASAP, so get in contact with myself or Melissa for the family fun night. But it's going to be at Lighthouse Christian Academy, and we're going to have fire and s'mores and a movie. It's going to be a great fun night together. Um, so, yeah, get in contact with myself or Melissa to register for that. I think that's all I have, right? Yep. Am I missing anything? There we go. Okay, we've just saying he is always faithful and that he will always endure. But here's our work, friends. Here's our work. We gotta trade it all in. We gotta trade it in and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to your way, to your will. I'm surrendering it all. So it says I am pressed, but I'm not crushed. I am persecuted, but I am not abandoned. Because why? His promises will endure, and his joy is my strength. Will you stand with me and sing, I'm trading my sorrows? And yes, Alicia, at 11.45, Sunday school is there. Let's stand and trade it all in for the joy of the Lord this morning. There we go, I'm trading. I'm trading my soul.
promise will endure that if joy is gonna be my strength though the sorrow may last for the night joy comes in the morning here we go i'm trading my glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner bearing inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide how long and how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Are you ready to say yes, Lord? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Are you ready to say yes, Lord, to him this week? Amen. Trade everything in for the joy of the Lord, church. That is our prayer for you. Say yes, Lord, every day. May God bless, and we'll see you here at Connection Point next Sunday morning. Happy week.